That's Jerry here, and here's the sermon breakdown. Purify your soul. And so that was the bean. The bean was you responded to the God. Really, you care about people. You, you don't just pretend to care about people, but you really do care about people. Well, in a covenant, committed relationship to your brothers and sisters in Christ, I do that. And this is where the word comes in and the gospel comes in because it's the only thing short of God's word and the gospel that can transform you from the inside out. Well, this week we talked about love one another from 1 Peter chapter 1, 22 to 25. And in it, it said this, since you have an obedience to the truth, purify your soul for love of the brothers without hypocrisy. Fervently love one another from the heart. For you have been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed. That's through the living, enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass. And all is it the glory like the flowers of the grass. And the grass withers and the flower falls off. But the word of the Lord endures forever. This is a word which proclaimed to you as the good news. Now, as we looked at this passage, this is really about the love for one another that we should have in the church. And he talked a little bit about this. And the first thing he was talking about, to your beings of truth that purify you. And as we talk about this sermon, this is not uh, a beings of truth, the purification. It's not works righteousness. Because we know by faith, you would say by by grace, not by works. We know that but from Ephesians. But here's what he's talking about is if we look early to the passage, he's talking about the gospel. Your obedience to the gospel. You've known the gospel. You received the gospel. Be obedient to the gospel. You know, respond to it. Put your faith and trust in the gospel and live out your life as if, as to the gospel. And so that's what this passage was talking about. And then that Change that obedience, that purification should lead to obedience or, or, or to the love of the brethren and sisters in Christ. And he gives some specific things. First being that it, it should be a brotherly love. And this is where we get the word Philadelphia, brotherly love, or we could say sisterly love. It's talking about you should have a family love for those in the church. That you should love those in church as your brothers and sisters of Christ, as your moms and dads of Christ. That you should love them as a family. And the next thing I talked about is without hypocrisy. There should be a genuine faith. It should not, a relationship should not be, uh, should be sincere. It should not be wearing masks, but you should see each other and genuinely love and care for one another. It should be a fervent love, and fervent means stretching out. And this word love here is agape, and so it's a covenant love, like a husband to a wife or parents to a child is this covenant love. And then it talks about from the heart, and this is a word from your desire, that you desire to have a loving relationship with those in the church. And so as we've talked about earlier, for a while we've been talking about the gospel and with the gospel and sanctification, talked about this horror of vertical relationship. But that horror vertical relationship we got to then affect our horizontal relationship, which is what he's saying here. And we ask ourselves, well, this is great. I would love for my church family to look like this, Peter. But how is that possible? And so this is where he goes and he goes back to the word of God because it's the word of God is the gospel that makes us available. It talks about that the word of God is a transforming word, that you are sanctified, you have been transformed, not by a corruptible seed, not of the seed of this world, not of the, the ways of the world, but incorruptible seed, by the word of God, by God's word, God's truth, by the gospel, you have been changed radical. It is a supernatural transformation by the gospel. He then talks about the enduring word. And, and in here, he talk, quotes Isaiah 40, which the Israelites were chasing after the pagan gods and doing idolatry. God says, 
Don't listen to that. That's, that's all fake. That's not real. Seek me. Seek my word because only my word is eternal. And it is God's word, that eternal word that will change us and sanctify us so that we can truly love our brothers and sister in Christ. And in it, I finish off by talking about to think about and meditate on how God has loved you. And, and, and specifically, I talk about how Jesus loved the disciple. He chose the disciple. He taught the disciple. He protected the disciples. He took care of their physical needs. He encouraged them. He empowered the disciples. He forgave his disciples. He was very patient with his disciples. And he loved them sacrificially to the point of death on the cross. And as Jesus has loved his disciples that way, he has loved you, beloved, that way. And we need to understand, how has God loved you? And so this goes to the, the memory verse, uh, John 13, uh, 34 through 35. Let's see if I can look it up real quick here. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 13, uh, 34, 35. A new command I gave you that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that as you love one another, and by this all will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is a defining quality of a believer, of those who are part of churches, that they love one another. Let me leave you with these few questions. First of all, take the time to consider how you experience how God has loved you. And just think about it. Just write it out. Don't think of it. Just say, how have you experienced God's love? And then after, after you've thought about how God's loved you, then think about understanding, knowing, and experiencing God's love for you. How does that affect you so you can better love one another in the church? Number three, meditate. I encourage you to meditate on the First Corinthians 13, uh, 4 through 6, and Galatians 22 to 23. And how can we better understand loving one another by looking at these passages? Last of all, also meditate on 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3, and 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 8 through 13. Um, and, and in it, I want you to think about why is loving one another more important than any other religious act? And just pray on these. Think about them. I pray this will be a blessing to you. Um, this message has been a blessing to me. God bless you and have a great week. And this has been the Sermon Breakdown. If you like these videos, please like share, subscribe, and ring that bell. God bless you, and have a good day.